In 1850, Napoleon III renamed the beaches and lagoons of New Caledonia the land of great punishment. France had made this stunning archipelago into a penal colony. The idyllic landscapes of New Caledonia reveal nothing of the twists of its contrasting history. Even today, the future of the Kanak people is not settled. Currently an overseas territory of France, in 2012, New Caledonia will hold a referendum to choose between independence and autonomy. In the meantime, the turquoise waters of the Melanesian archipelago have made it a paradise for privileged tourists and those who love the wide open spaces of this little known land. Okay, there's some gravel here. The, the bit tricky. The stones are my friends. It's okay. Fascinated by the natural riches of Caledonia, Manfred has chosen to settle here. From a mainlander, a Zoriel, he has become a Caledonian. This hiking guide has a passion for Yate Lake and its drowned forest. A hydroelectric dam flooded the valley of the Blue River. It snakes through the heart of an extraordinary forest rooted in red lateritic soil. These are the colors of the Great South, which has become Manfred's playground. 20 years ago, I was lucky enough to come here with the Navy, and it really made me want to come back here to live. I could see there wasn't much going on with ecotourism. I really wanted to get into that, and I developed different concepts for tourist activities. Kayaking, canyoning, hiking in this really magical environment. I basically know the Great South. That's my adventure playground. But there are plenty of other places to explore. Magnificent forests. Real primary forests. It's this wild beauty that isn't in the tourist guides that people should discover. That's why I love New Caledonia. It's always beautiful. It's a paradise for nature lovers. It's just awesome. Yes, there's the lagoon, but there's all the rest as well. Amongst all the beautiful places we'll see, there's one that is particularly close to my heart. I haven't been there yet. It was hard to get to a few years ago, and now it is open to the public. It's Mount Panier. Mount Panier is an extraordinary magical place. I think that all Caledonians and all tourists dream of going there, but it is a place that must be respected. You need to approach it properly so that it's a beautiful hike that shows respect to the tribes who guard the mountain. Mount Pani is the highest point of New Caledonia, which is made up of a string of islands. The largest is in fact a section of Australia that drifted away 80 million years ago. On its tectonic journey, the archipelago carried away a stream of species unique in the world, which gives its forests some of the highest rates of endemism on the planet. Manfred has got together a small group of walkers, including a nine-year-old child. It takes six to eight hours of walking to reach the summit at 1,629 meters. The guide association, Deubik, prepares the way. At each altitude, there are different natural environments to be seen. Hey, you can see the sea. Really? Oh, yeah. Um. 
After the primary forest, they see the mosses of the humid forest, and higher still, at around 1,200 meters, the great endemic species of Mount Pani that have earned it its status as a biological reserve. On these amazing slopes, 200 unique plant species have already been identified by scientists. But the highlight of the show is a little before the summit, the great Kaori. Kaori Agatis Montana, Dayubik in the Kanak language. It exists here on Mont Panier, but nowhere else. It only exists on Mount Panier? Yes, on Mount Panier. Totally endemic to Mount Panier? Yes, endemic. And in these conditions, it's quite extreme here with strong winds. Yes, they are strong. The trees are always at this height. They can't ever go higher. They can't go higher. And can you eat the fruit? Yes, you can. Pigs eat it. <laughs> the Caledonian forests have long been exploited especially those by the sea, which have been deforested to the point of threatening major species. The great Kaori of Mount Pani only owes its safety to the altitude where it grows, and therefore the difficulty of cutting it down. Go on, you must be the first to get up to the summit. Run, run, run. Go on, Tom. Well done, everyone. Thank you, Morris. Well done. Voilà. Well done, everyone. Thank you, Maurice. Well done. You got us here. Well, it was a good walk. <laughs> Tom, well done. You're the champ. The best. 1,629 meters. In two and a half hours. <laughs> Tom has achieved the feat of being the first child of nine to climb to the roof of Caledonia. It's a symbol of the fantastic tourist potential of the archipelago and of the ecological concern over its development, given the rare and precious nature of its biological wealth. The conservation of the Caledonian forest also allows the lagoon to breathe. There's a close relationship between these two environments which appear unlinked, and it's the runoff water that streams down the slopes and drains into the ground. Following the course of the Nera River, Manfred comes out onto Roche Percy Beach, which is one of only two nesting sites on the Pacific for loggerhead turtles, and also an important holiday resort in New Caledonia. That's how the species came under threat, and high emotion was aroused by the announcement of their disappearance. Nobody knew that newborn turtles use light to find their way, so instead of moving towards the moonlit lagoon, the little turtles, attracted to the artificial light from neighboring houses, found themselves on the road. A conservation association was therefore formed. Manu Hernu is one of the founder members. She's made a first nest here, but she seems to have moved again. She must be a bit further over here. Oh, there she is. Let's go quietly and see. In addition to an awareness campaign, a protection operation has been started. Every night, people come and identify the nest sites. She's laying her eggs. In this 2008-2009 season, the eco-rangers of the association have identified 240 nests that they are doing their best to protect. Around 30,000 eggs have been incubated in the hot sand. Only one in a thousand will survive. <sighs> oh. 
She's just laying her last eggs. These 240 nests have been dug by just 80 female turtles over five months. But these turtles won't come back for another three or four years after a long stay in Australia. She's starting to fill in her nest. She's finished laying. She's a lovely little animal. A lovely little animal who's over 30 years old, since that is the age when turtles become sexually mature. That's it. She's going. We must follow. Since its creation, the association has seen real progress. The simple presence of eco-rangers on the beach every night, combined with education of residents, has meant that in three years they have gone from protecting 140 nests to 240. Every day at dawn, an active member of the Buari Turtle Association takes over from the eco-rangers. Roberto is one of them. He walks along the 1,500 meters of sand to identify the nests that have been spotted. He counts the eggs, between 120 and 150 per nest, and protects them. He places a cage over the nest to ensure the continuation of an age-old cycle. In addition to light, there are many other threats. People come to the beach, obviously, but also stray dogs. 90% of eggs are destroyed in that way. The appearance of the beach suffers somewhat, but all of the eggs hatch now. Incubation lasts at least 52 days, so the eco-rangers know exactly which cages to lift. It just remains for Roberto to free about 10 little turtles that are too weak to get out of the nest on their own. Oh, it's so sweet. It's really cute. Put your hand like that. That's it, you hold it. We'll go and put them on the sand while they get wet. Try not to drop them. This activity has the advantage of attracting children and increasing awareness. Above all, it means that 2,000 turtles reach the sea every year that previously faced certain death before they ever saw daylight or tasted the sea. Statistically, only two of them will live long enough to return and lay their eggs on the beach. Those figures say a lot about the survival chances for this species. Today, there are international conventions to protect marine turtles, since Melanesians and Polynesians traditionally used to eat their meat on special occasions. These days, you can even come across them in the Caledonian Lagoon. New Caledonia is a center for scuba diving. 
A large part of its lagoon and its great coral reef have just been listed on UNESCO's World Heritage List. That will at last provide a framework for the protection of this jewel. A few kilometers from the main island, the Loyalty Islands are uplifted coral atolls. Unlike the main island, the Grand Terra, which was originally part of a continent. Lifu is the largest of these coral islands. In the north of Lifu, the village of Dokin is perched on a cliff. It's a perfect place for Manfred, who's always looking for something new. He's found a place suitable for developing a roping activity, which takes a lot of preparation. The inhabitants of the Loyalty Islands, and those of Lifu in particular, have a reputation for being warm-hearted. Protestant missionaries converted 90% of the population. There's a sort of Anglo-Saxon efficiency, and the most feudal aspects of Canuck tradition have been softened. Thus, tradition and democracy work together better in Lefou than elsewhere in Caledonia. Cooking the bunya, a typically Melanesian dish, is an art in itself. Making it is a most sophisticated task. The secret lies in the preparation of the coconut milk the blend of local flavorings, not to forget the yam, the sacred tuber of the Melanesian island arc. <laughs> the traditional oven on the ground is made of heated coral stones placed around the bunya which is tied up in banana leaves. This technique means that it cooks slowly, resulting in a tender dish with cleverly blended flavors. For those who like the unusual, the cliffs of Dokin conceal a narrow passage allowing access inside the coral itself. Willy is the custodian. Hello there. Hello, Manfred. Hi. How are you, William? Very well. It's good to see you, William. Delphine, shall we get ready? Yeah. Can you see if it's on right? Thanks. Thanks very much. Okay. I'll check your harness. OK, fine. Make sure your helmet's right. You can adjust the width and the depth. Yes, don't worry. Nice and strong. I'll put one here. OK. And the other one here. Ready? You can talk to me. You can ask me for more slack or less slack. OK. I'm going to let myself... Yeah, go ahead. No problem. Just drop. So you hold me. I shouldn't look down. That's easy. You can hold on easily. OK. That's it. You're getting to the bottom of the passage. OK. Now your feet are going to be out in the open. Wait. Wait. Easy, easy. I'm going to let you down gently. Nothing to worry about. Everything's OK. All right. It's incredible. Oh, it's magnificent. 
Wow. Okay. Okay, go on. Okay. Okay. Vas-y. Okay. But gently. Wow. It's a bit high. But it's beautiful. Ooh. Okay. Okay. I do small. Go down. Wow. Oh, the ground. Wow. C'est haut, mais c'est beau. A bit more. Vas-y, descend. That's it. Okay. I'm down. It's great. It's fantastic, really great. I did it. I'm really happy. It's a bit slippery. The limestone formation of the Loyalty Islands and the runoff waters that dissolve the mineral have given birth to the numerous caves of Lefou. Here, all the fresh water is held in the water table. There are no rivers on Loyalty Island. Everything is hidden deep in the innards of the island, which a curious creature, coral, made hundreds of thousands of years ago. Gradually, through the action of air and water, other geological structures have appeared. They are the glory of the Lefou Caves, a site that is both precious and accessible. It's fantastic. Look, Delphine, these are what they call eccentrics. There? They defy all the laws of gravity. They're not stalactites or stalagmites. You get the feeling they've just been made by the wind. You're right. It's extraordinary. They're really thin and they're all over the place. It's great. Oh, magnificent. So it's really a traditional dish. That's right, it's the dish of our ancestors. For every traditional feast, for example, a wedding, a funeral, or a birthday, the bunya must be there. It's sacred, and you're lucky because it's rare for the Europeans who come here to eat it because everyone who comes here stays in hotels. But the best thing is to stay in Kanak villages, because then you can experience ordinary life in a Kanak environment. Mm -hmm. It looks wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. It's colors, its natural environments, its traditions, its history and population make New Caledonia a land of contrasts. Nevertheless, Canuck tradition remains the central point of social equilibrium, which contributes to the exceptional preservation of this archipelago. Today, tourism is starting to develop around the tribes, and by listing the largest lagoon in the world as a World Heritage Site, UNESCO has clearly signalled its unique character and inestimable value. <laughs>